Jesus is in the room. We believe it. We believe it. We believe it. That Jesus is in the room. My miracle is in the room. Freedom is in the room. Your breakthrough 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 is in the room. Come on, prophesy. Say my. My breakthrough is in the room. 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 Cause Jesus, cause Jesus is in the room. Yeah. Well, Jesus is in the room. 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 The Bible says in Matthew 18, verses 19 and 20, that when just two or three gather in his name, come on, wave at me if you gathered here for Jesus. So here's the promise, here's the promise. It says that when we gather in his name, y'all know this verse, it says that he will be in the midst of us. So wave at me again if you came here for Jesus, come on. So we can confidently declare that Jesus is in the room, that your miracle is in the room, that freedom is in the room, that your breakthrough is in the room. Come on, one more time with our hands lifted, say it, say Because Jesus is in the room. Jesus is in the room. Jesus is in the room. Jesus is in the room, so my breakthrough, so my breakthrough is in the room, yeah, my breakthrough is in the room, my breakthrough is in the room, look at the person and say, your breakthrough is in, look at the person on your other side and say, your breakthrough is in, say your freedom, your freedom is in the room, yeah, your freedom is your freedom is in, say my freedom, my freedom, my freedom is in the room. My freedom, my freedom is in the room. My freedom, my freedom is in the room. My freedom is in the room. My healing, my healing is in the room. Somebody just receive the presence of the Lord that's in this room right now. Receive the presence of the Lord. Whatever you need is in the room. Yeah. We welcome you, Jesus. Am I? There's nothing worth more that could ever come close no thing can compare you're our living hope your presence Lord mm -hmm. and 
victorious God. He reigns in victory. He's earned the name that he bears as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's never lost any battles. He's never lost any battles. I don't care what you're facing. Our God is victorious. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for meeting us here tonight. Thank you for having your way tonight. For doing something new inside of each and every one of us. it up. Come on, sing it out. She will listen to the sound of power on our lips. Jesus has broken the curse. He has never lost a battle. And he never will, he never will. No, he never will, he never will. Can we sing that verse again? Sing it. He is my faithful Father, calling me out of the dark. Night cannot whisper away what he said in the light. He's my firm, he is my firm.
Thank you, Jesus. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to
Y'all lead it, y'all lead it, y'all lead it.
just need to let that lyric settle into your heart tonight. I want you to close your eyes just between you and the Lord. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. Some of you are standing with what feels like the weight of unanswered prayers and you need to say out loud, I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I trust in God, my savior. He will never fail. I want you to say it out loud right now. You don't have to be the greatest singer in the room to say, I trust in God, my Savior, the one he will never fail. Right where you stand, I want you to just, I want you just to release to the Lord whatever is heavy in your heart. Whatever it is that you're carrying, whoever it is that you're carrying. And I want you to allow the Holy Spirit to begin to heal what still feels a little broken within you. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. He will answer you with peace in this place. He will answer you with restoration that you don't see coming. He will answer you with declarations of faith within your spirit that your situation just doesn't allow for. He will answer you. So quiet yourself right now. I trust in God. Yes. The one who will never fail. God, in this place, I pray that you would give us eyes to see you. Lord, allow us to stand still before you in your presence, completely consumed. If you're in this place and you're not used to a worship moment like this, there's nothing weird about it. I encourage you just to stand still in the presence of God and allow peace to consume you. That's the presence of God healing in his presence. There are miracles in this room right now. Some of you are being healed in your bodies right now. Some of you are being healed in your minds right now. Nothing wild has to happen. It's just the touch of the Father. I just encourage you to receive right now everything that God has for you. The greatest blessings we receive in life come from a posture of surrender. And in this place, God, we are surrendered to you. We ask you, Father, for your presence to just sweep across the room. Thank you for your healing presence right now. Thank you for your joy filled presence right now. We're going to transition into another moment of worship, and you should have grabbed a communion cup as you came into the room. I want to encourage you right here in this place, in this place of expectation, in this place of surrender. I don't want you to move from it. Just grab your cup and come right back because there is so much more that God has for you. One of the sweetest memories that I have of communion as a, as a little girl was we used to gather together in my church growing up in. And during those communion moments, we would gather with our families. We would come down to the altar and we would kneel with our families, our friends, whomever it was that we came with. And I wanna invite you to a moment. I believe God has placed something specific on your hearts tonight that you came here to receive. Some of you know exactly what that is. And I would love for you just to take a moment. The team is gonna play behind us. I'd love for you to take a moment. If you came with somebody, if you trust them with your heart, maybe it's family, maybe it's not, love for you just to take a moment and pray together and lift one another up, believing for whatever it is 
that you need God to take tonight. And maybe you came by yourself and that's perfectly fine. I want you right at your seat, right where you are, if you're comfortable, just to pray and ask God, Lord, I'm taking a moment to remember everything that you have done for us on the cross. We're taking a moment to be grateful for your surrender. We are taking a moment to remember the body that was broken for our healing. Yeah. We're taking a moment to remember the blood that cleanses us and washes us clean. So before we go into that moment, I want you just to take a moment and thank the Lord for everything that he's done for you lay anything down that remains just while our team plays behind. Just take the next few moments. Join us, join us. So if you'll first grab the wafer that's in the top. The Bible says in Matthew 26 that Jesus was sitting with his disciples and he took the bread and they said he broke it and he blessed it. And this isn't just something we do 
If you've been a part of Hope City, you know we take these moments seriously. This is a sacred moment, a holy moment. We don't just do it as a symbol or a symbolic moment, but we believe there's power in this moment, that there's power and healing power that is in this moment. And But Jesus took the bread and he broke it like we with this wafer break it tonight as family. And this represents the brokenness of his body, the brokenness that he endured, that we read about in Isaiah 53 and 1 Peter 2, 24, that what he endured, what he took on, what he became, all your sins, all your iniquities, all your struggles, you paid for that day. So Jesus, tonight, in this room, at 5.50 p.m., on the 28th of January, 2024, the same power that was released that day on the cross is the same power that we're experiencing in this room at Hope City West Houston campus. So God, right now we take this and we thank you for the price that you paid. Can you take a moment as a daughter, as a son, and just talk to the Lord and thank him. Thank you for taking on that beating for me. Thank you for enduring that pain for me. Thank you for taking on all of that shame for me. And paying for the tab in full. We take this tonight as a church family. We do this in remembrance of you. Come on, family, let's take the wafer together. In the next layer, the juice represents the blood of Jesus. It says that in the same way they took the cup and he blessed it. And he talked about how the blood that would be shed would cover all sin, every disease. The blood is bigger than the name of diabetes. The, the blood is bigger than the name of cancer. The blood is bigger than the name of that neurological problem or that cardiovascular issue. We believe that there's power in the, in the precious blood of Jesus. When we're singing these hymns and we're singing these moments, they're not just words. This is not a karaoke moment. I've shared this story before, but I feel compelled again. I was at a conference and uh, I respect and honor the authority of who was in charge of the conference for the sake of uh, not slander or gossip. I'll keep the names protected. But they said, hey, we're trying something a little new. We would love for any of the songs that you're gonna be doing, if it says blood, can you just switch the word out for love? They said, we don't wanna freak anybody out. So they wanted me to sing, oh, the love of Jesus, oh, the love of Jesus. And you know what? It was his love that was poured out and it was his love that he got up on the cross for us. But if it wasn't for the blood, if it wasn't for the blood that was shed, that covers every sickness, if it wasn't for the blood that was shed, that changed the trajectory of my family, it, if it wasn't for the blood that restored and delivered a drug addict and an alcoholic that I call my dad, if it wasn't for the blood, that was shed on that cross. And so I said, with all due respect, I'll just switch up the set list because I'm a product and I'm proof that there's power in the blood. Come on, I need somebody to prophesy that over your marriage, that the blood of Jesus can fix that broken marriage, that the blood of Jesus can fix that broken family, that the blood of Jesus can heal that broken body, that the blood of Jesus can restore that mind and so in the same way, it says that by his stripes, we are healed. So in just a moment, when we do this together as a family, here's what I want. I want you to close your eyes and believe that the blood still works and that every stripe he took on was not just for you to read about and hear about, but it's something you get to experience, that you get to encounter the person of Jesus just like in Matthew chapter 9, verse 20, when the woman with the issue of blood 
encountered Jesus or when blind Bartimaeus encountered Jesus or when Lazarus was raised up from the dead because of the power of Jesus. God, we take this cup tonight as family and we thank you for the blood of Jesus that was poured out that says that by your stripes we are healed, we are set free, and we are delivered. Before you drink it, I want you to say, I'm healed, I'm set free, and I'm delivered. Come on, family, let's take this tonight together. If you could just put your cup down and just lift your hands towards heaven, stand if you can, and just begin to worship him. The Spirit in the room, Holy Spirit, we just continue to thank you that your Spirit is in the room. daily bread this is my daily bread oh this is my daily bread your very word spoken to me say Even if you can't sing on key, can you lift your hands and say, I'm desperate for you, see? And I Go to the one, Edwin. Go to the one. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Where is all about you? Yes, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it. Cause it's all about you. It's all, if you know this, would you sing it? I'm coming back, I'm coming back to the heart of the world. When it's all about you, when it's all about you, it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. 
body can you lift your hands towards heaven God I thank you for the tangible miracle working power that's in the room God I thank you tonight that your power and your presence is filling the atmosphere we're in an atmosphere of miracles if you need a miracle in your physical body just keep your hands lifted if you are near someone who has their hand lifted would you put your hand on their shoulder and just begin to hook up your faith and just begin to believe. God, we thank you. It's my favorite verse on healing. I speak Isaiah 58, 8 over them. That just as sure as the sun will rise, health, strength, and life is springing forth speedily. I thank you that your righteousness goes out in front of them. That your glory overtakes them and has their rear guard. God, you've always had their back. You have their now. And we thank you that you've written victory in their next. I thank you from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet that every fiber, every tissue, every organ, every blood cell, every nerve, every tendon, even down to the bone marrow, we call things that the doctors say will never be fixed or able to be fixed, we call it to be made whole. We speak the name of Jesus over it. I thank you that tumors are shrinking tonight, that nodules are shrinking tonight, that polyps are shrinking tonight, whether they're benign or malignant. We speak the name of Jesus over the name of cancer, and we thank you that every cell is lining up. Every cell that's a cancerous cell is being replaced with a healthy, Jesus-filled cell. God, we thank you right now that lungs are being healed, that chronic bronchitis and asthmatic issues and COPD is being healed, that lungs are being made whole, that scar tissue is being removed. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you that backs are being healed, hips and joint pain are being healed, arthritic issues are being healed sciatic nerve issues are being healed. God, we thank you that spines are being made whole in the name of Jesus, that back problems are being healed in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you that somebody with a left shoulder issue is being healed. We're in the atmosphere of the miracle worker. So God, we thank you that this shoulder is being healed. It's an old injury that you've just gotten used to and it's being healed right now. God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Sleep problems. Waking up all hours of the night, can't sleep. Feeling wild during the day because you're not getting enough sleep. God, I thank you for sweet sleep. I pray for rest. I pray, God, for the best sleep they've ever gotten tonight, that they would sleep all the way through the night. And that six, seven, eight hours would be like they slept 15 hours. Breathe on their rest. Breathe on their sleep. I pray that stress and anxiety is, is, is lowering right now, God, in their mindsets, in their, in their lives, in their, in their family. God, I pray right now for sweet, 
sweet sleep right now. If you need it, receive it. I thank you. I think somebody with kidney problems. I don't know who this is. I feel the spirit of God just stirring in this room. I feel it. I feel it. You're having kidney problems. And, and the doctors have told you that you're going to have to go on dialysis. God, right now I call kidneys to be made whole in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you that Jesus, you're moving. Some of y'all thought you were coming to a concert, but you just walked into your miracle. Some of you walked in here tonight and thought you were going to be entertained, but you're going to walk out with your miracle. I feel the Spirit of God filling. I don't know who this is for. I'm always really sensitive in these moments, so I won't ask you to call it out or even identify yourself, but I felt like the Lord said, the thing that they have been trying to heal in their own strength, and you have been self-medicating, and you have been self-afflicting, you've been cutting, and you've cut your legs so that nobody sees it, but now you've moved to your arms. I feel tonight that the Spirit of God is about to sweep over your life, speak over your heart, sweep over your mind. And the last time you cut is the last time because peace is about to overtake you in areas of your life that you have felt like are in pieces. I don't know who this is for, but it's broken off. Those shackles are broken off. Those chains are broken off. Right now, somebody should give God praise for whoever just got set free. Now look at me. It'll be part of your story. This is a part of your, I once was bound, but now I'm free. I once was held captive by the enemy, but now I walk in the light. God, I thank you that those scars are being healed. Being healed, being healed being healed, being healed. And every lie of the enemy that says that no one will miss you, every lie of the enemy that says no one will notice if you were no longer here, any lie of the enemy that's tried to tell you that you're a shadow and no one even sees you, God sees you. The spirit of the living God who shaped and molded you in his image sees you. And he's not done with you yet. You are standing in his righteousness. You are standing in his faithfulness. God, I pray that the chains of suicidal ideology is broken off. Every lie of the enemy that's tried to creep in and tell somebody that they're no longer... I pray, God, today that the Spirit of God would fill hearts with joy. I feel this strong Spirit of God breathe with joy, with joy, with joy with happiness. Come on, I need somebody to just whisper and say, I'm valuable. I am seen. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows your name. He knows my name. Come on, just say it. He knows. My, I want everybody to say it. He knows my name. I'm not overlooked. I'm not insignificant. Say it again. He knows my name. Now say it like you mean it. Say, he knows my name. When others have forgotten my name, he knows my name. God, I thank you today that there is worth, self-worth. There is a value placed right now in the hearts of that daughter, that son. God, I pray for a fresh perspective. I pray, God, for a freed perspective that this week would be the best week of their life and all those dark, heavy moments. I feel it. It's lifting off. And the way that we replace the spirit of heaviness is you have to put on a garment of praise. So right now, God, I pray for a fresh wind, a garment of praise to fill this room and be placed over every daughter, every son. Will you just receive it? Shout out loud, I receive it. This is my last prayer, and I'm going to give it back to y'all. I was in... Uh, Right outside Lubbock, I was preaching at this conference, and I felt this, this urgency to pray for a loved one, a family member, someone really close that was not in the room. And you had been believing that the things that were holding them bound would be broken off 
and that they would be free. And I, I just prayed it, and this little boy walked to the front, and he stood down here, and I saw him, and he was like trying to get my attention. So I said, hey, what's, what's going on? He said, I'm standing in the gap for, and he told me. And I said, well, where do they live? And he said, I, I think about 200 miles that way. And so this is what I said. I said, hey, church family, I want everybody to stretch your hands and begin to release your faith to believe for a miracle in his family about 200 miles that way. And man, when I tell you the, the fire in that room and the power of God's presence hit that room and everybody hooked their faith up with this little boy's faith. It reminded me of the little boy with the fish and the loaves. And we begin to pray. I went back to that conference a year later and this person walked up to me and said, hey, and they kind of came at me aggressive. So I was like, what's up? You know what I mean? Like, and they said, I want, I want to tell you a story. And they began to tell me the story of the little boy, the nephew, who prayed and we released faith. Because y'all, there's no distance in prayer. And said, I'm living proof that prayer works. I felt God shake me out of my sleep and I begin to get drawn in to his presence. The Bible says in Romans chapter two, verse four, that it's the goodness and love of God that draws a person's heart to a place of freedom. If you were believing God for a breakthrough in a family member's life, maybe they're in prison, maybe they're in county jail, maybe they're in a hospital, maybe they're far away from God, caught up in the prodigal life. Will you just begin to lift your hands and believe? God, we thank you tonight for restoration, we thank you tonight for restoration. If you're believing God for that family member, I want you to call out their name. Call out their name. Call out their name. God, we thank you that call out their name is coming to know you as their personal Lord and Savior. God, send somebody, if not us, send somebody to come across their path to speak life into them. We call, say their name into the kingdom we call say their name to be restored to be made whole to be set free we call them into the kingdom and god we thank you that even this month next month god this year we're going to get a testimony that say their name is come to know you as their personal lord and savior can somebody give god a shout of praise We serve a miracle working God. I'm telling you, y'all, in year nine, if you call Hope City home, we're about to encounter a depth in his presence that this church has never seen. We're about to go deeper in the river. We're about to see the Spirit of God do miracles that we have only ever heard about things that you hear John G. Lake and Smith Wigglesworth days where people come and leave wheelchairs at the altar, where people come and leave walkers at the altar, where people walk in blind and walk out with their sight, where people walk in with no hearing and walk out. I'm telling you, God is breathing. Don't believe the hype that churches are declining. Don't believe in the hype that the Spirit of God is no longer moving. Don't believe the hype that it's not happening. Here's our prayer. If you're going to move into Houston, move right here, God. If you're going to start revival, breathe here, oh God. If you're going to move, God, in signs and wonders and miracles, somebody shout, move here, oh God. That's what we believe. And this is the thing. It doesn't have to be weird. It doesn't have to be strange. It's an upper room moment. It's in Acts chapter 2, and all of them were in one place, unified together, in one place, gathered in his name. And it says, suddenly. Somebody shout, suddenly. No, somebody shout it, suddenly. It says, suddenly, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, breathed like a mighty rushing wind into the room. Here's my thing. When I read that story, I think, well, if it happened then, it could happen right here. If it happened in the upper room, it can happen right here. Y'all believe that? 
So come on, lift our hands towards heaven. God, we thank you for one of those upper room moments where signs, wonders, and miracles are poured out. God, to the skeptic, I thank you that you're just overshadowing them tonight. To the one that has been consumed by denominational thought processes, overshadow them tonight. For the one that doubts and wonders if this is real or not, God, reveal yourself to them tonight. For the one that says, I don't know, I, I don't know, I, I'm, just, I'm just not sure, I, I pray, God, that you would just begin to tug on their heart tonight. Let something, the Holy Spirit, begin to stir in us in such a way. To the one who's claimed agnostic and even atheism, reveal your hand, reveal your presence, reveal your supernatural sovereignty tonight.
Hallelujah. 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 The Bible tells us the promises of God are yes and amen. He is faithful. And I have a testimony today that God saved me from a world of sin. He turned my life around. If you got a testimony, you may even be walking through your testimony. But this is a good moment to celebrate the goodness and mercy of Jesus. Hallelujah.
Just give it to the Lord tonight. Oh, we leave room for you to move. Oh, we leave room. We leave room for you to move, living God.
love what Matthew 7 says. It says, therefore, if you put my words into practice, you will be like the man who built his house on the rock. It says that the waters came, the winds blew, everything was up against him, but the house did not shake because it was on the firm foundation of Jesus. And some of you tonight need to move your house and put it on the rock. You were on old soil, but today you got to put it on the rock of Jesus. So right now, with expectation, with belief in the one in whom we're worshiping right now, come on, lift your hands up in the room. Come on, let's sing it again, Christ. Christ is my firm foundation. He's the rock on which I stand. Everything around me shakes. I've never, I've never been. for the gift of your presence. As we pour out our praise, Father, we thank you that your word says you inhabit the praises of your people. That means you live in the praises of your people. So as we lift up worship, Father, we thank you that we can declare that the king is in the room. As Pastor Daniel said earlier, the healer is in the room. The way maker is in the room. Restoration is here. Freedom is here. Whatever you need is right here in this room. So Father, we take hold of our healing. We take hold of what you have for us, knowing that you are faithful, knowing that you hear our prayers. Father, we declare that it is so. It is so in our homes, it is so in our lives, it is so in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can we just raise up worship all over this room? Oh, come on, like you know that God just made a way. Like you know God just healed your family. Like you know God just restored your mind. Like you know during this 21 days of prayer, God turned it all around. Somebody praise him, praise him. Somebody praise him, praise him. Y'all ready to celebrate in this house? I said, 
It doesn't come.